Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Steve welcoming you here to our first chapel right here at St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. We thank you for being with us. New students, old students, every one of the students, teachers and staffs, we're coming together to do one thing this morning, but also throughout the year of giving praise and honor to God for what he has done for us. Yes, in the midst of a crazy time in our world, we're here to worship Jesus. And the way that we do that, as we always want to begin our chapel, I want you to stand up, make sure you're standing up, and go ahead and put your hand up with me as we always begin. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we call upon his name, we give thanks to our God, and we're going to give thanks in a certain way. I'm going to read some words, and then I'm going to point to you, and as I point to you, you're going to say, we thank you, Lord. So we're going to try that real quickly here. I'm going to say some words, and then when I point to you, you say, we We thank thank you, you, Lord. Lord. All right, let's read this Thanksgiving litany together. It says, let us thank God with our hearts. We remember that it is God who has given us our life, who renews his love to us each day. We We thank thank you, Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We thank you, Lord. It is God who forgives our sin and remembers it no more. We thank you, Lord. It is with our hearts and hands that we receive the many gifts that God has for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank God not only with our minds, but also with our voices. We thank you, Lord. For the gifts of body and soul, eyes, ears, and all our members, our reason and all our senses, for all that he gives to support our bodily life. We thank you, Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with his children. We thank you, Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to sing together, so I keep standing as we go into our opening song here. Let's sing together, love the Lord your God. Let's review the motions that we're going to do as we sing together. Go like this for love the Lord your God with all your, and make a heart, heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Get those muscles out there. Show the muscles. Here we go. Let's try singing the first part together. Starts out with love. Ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Let's do that again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You know what? We have a special theme this school year. Have you heard what our theme is? Let's see. Do any of you know? Can you look around your room? Do you see our special poster? Hmm. What is the theme this school year? I see even the poster that's in the gym, probably for PE as you go over there. I see it. Oh, goodness. Good job. Let's see. Has everyone found it in their classroom? Let's say it together. This is our theme this year. Sent Sent to to serve. serve. So this next verse of the song says, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Let's sing. I will serve you, Lord. I will serve you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. And with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, I will serve. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Now we get to do a really fun echo part. Are you ready? So I'm going to sing the first part, and you guys follow Pastor Steve as you sing the echo. 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 You get it? (laughs) I will love you. I will love you. I will praise you. I will. I will serve you. I will trust you. 
I will trust you with, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love, I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. With all my strength. Please be seated. Throughout time and old generations ago, but even into the new generation as we teach about talking about loving the Lord with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, it's in all of ourselves. And the most amazing thing about that is God answers that and understands that with an unbelievable reality of how he's created us, how he's redeemed us, and how he has actually called us to faith, sanctifying. That's a big word. Sanctifying means to make us holy. So I want you to pray with me. I want you to fold your hands. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to bow your heads. And as we pray, we're going to pray through that Apostles' Creed, thanking the Lord for creating us, thanking the Lord for Jesus and his redemption, but also thanking the Holy Spirit and his work within our lives as well. Our whole selves, our whole God, one together as we worship him. Let's pray, fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads. Dear God, Father in heaven, we thank you for creating us just as we are. We thank you for everything that we have in this life because you provided that for us. Especially we thank you most of all for Jesus. You provided him, you sent him to come down into our world to be able to be born of the Virgin Mary, being able to suffer under Pontius Pilate. Well, he was crucified. He died on the cross, but he rose three days later. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of you, Father. So, Father, we thank you for also sending the Holy Spirit. He's our counselor. He's our helper. He's the one who has called us by faith. We thank you that he helps us believe in the love that we have and the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. And so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing us to this time to thank you for who we are, but most importantly, who you are. May your words continue to live in us, minister to us through your gospel. I pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Hey, everybody, just like Miss Schaefer said just a little bit ago. I'm sure you found the topic and the theme around your room in some kind of place. And it's an amazing thing to have during this start of the school year, even in the time that we're finding ourselves in, where we have to be socially distanced, we have to wear a mask, all those kind of different things. This incredible theme is called Sent to Serve. And on this message, I want to dive into that real quickly with you. We're going to tear it apart. We're going to look at sent. We're going to look at serve but I want you to get to it from Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, this is our theme verse for this year. It says, just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Have you ever received anything, let's say, in the mail? Have you ever received anything, maybe for our older students, over a text, over an email? Have you received anything like a gift from somebody else? The great thing about that is we're talking about receiving certain things. But really, our theme is all about sending, sent is that first word. Did you see that? It's S-E-N-T, as you find that on that poster. Sent. What does it mean to be sent? It means that somebody with this letter, actually this is from Indonesia. That's a country on the other side of the world. And somebody sent Pastor Steve. It says right here, Pastor Steve. They wanted to send me a letter from a ministry that's happening over across the ocean. Somebody had to think through, they have an envelope, they put something in there, and then they take action to be able to send me this letter. 
Just like if you want to communicate with somebody over text or over email, you write the email, you write the text, and then you press send. Ah, so sent has so many different realities of there has to be action taken. Things don't just really send on their own. It's not just I get an email from the cloud. Sometimes we do, but somebody has to have that man. And somebody has to be able to push that into action. Just like these letters and just like your texts. Sent. Sent takes action. And as you heard in our our Matthew chapter 20, God took action on us, for us. Because what did he do? He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And I know you know this well, so I know if you know it, please Reply with me. I'm going to turn in my Bible. I know it by heart, but I'm going to read it so that those that are going to join with me, we're going to read it just as it says in the Bible. John 3, 16. Really well known. Let's say it together. Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave, that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. You're going to hear a lot about that throughout our time in our chapels this year. That God took action on creation. He took action on you. He wanted to love you so much that he says, I'm going to send my son, Jesus, to do what I need to do, to forgive sins, to give life everlasting, but to show love to you and to me and all of creation. God took action and sent his son. But what did he do when he sent his son? That's the great thing about this is all of a sudden we get to see that it was sent to serve. Matthew chapter 20. Remember what was just read? You can look at that poster again. Just as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve. He was sent to serve you and me. What does that look like? I think it looks like this. I will go and I will love the ones you love. I will go and I will serve the ones you serve. I am sent to serve. I am sent to serve. I will go and I will love the ones you love. I will go and I will serve the ones
That's amazing how they've served you even before you got on to campus with the teachers and, and the congregation. But service takes so many different ways of being able to say you could pray for someone. That's actually serving them before God. You could put stickers down. You could, put, uh, you could just say kind words. That's a way of serving. We're going to unpack that fully throughout this whole year. But there, here's the reality. God has sent Jesus to you to serve you so that you would know what love is, so that you know what forgiveness is, and that you would know that eternal life is, because it only comes through Jesus. He has been sent to serve you and me. And then, in that way as well, we are then sent to serve the people around us. You might think, ah, how could I serve? That's a great question. You might get some thoughts about how you could pray for somebody or how you could help your teacher or how you could help your classmate, how you could help your family at home, how you can you serve. We're going to unpack that over and over again through this year. So I'm looking forward to being able to see how, yes, we are served by Jesus, but then how we serve one another. I want all the teachers in the classrooms to stand up right now. Yep, I want each and every teacher to stand up in their classroom making sure that they're the only ones standing up in that classroom because I want all those students to put their eyes on their teacher and to be able to understand that these people right in front of you have been sent to serve. God sent his son to serve them and to love them, and now God has chosen them, sent them, took action so that they would come and serve you and your families. Can we give them a round of applause? Can we give a hoop and a holler for them in that kind of way? It's amazing what these teachers have done and the aides have done and the administration has done. They have been called to serve you here at St. Paul. As we continue to really get down to that foundation of what sent to serve is all about an action of God, but then an action of me and you to that other person, we want to just get that foundation of what Jesus has done for us. And so... We love to be able to step forward into this and make this solid and make this a great song. So I want you all to stand up with your teachers now. Let's sing together, Jesus Loves Me, that perfect servant. Jesus has died on that cross for us because he loves us. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for this summer, not exactly as we planned it, but still a time of rest, of recuperation, a time to spend together with families. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this school year. We pray your hand of protection over this campus, over all the teachers, all the students, all of their families that will be here every day. You keep us healthy, you keep us strong, and you give us quick minds, you give us endurance for what the school year means. Help us to learn what you've put before us. Help us to learn the different subjects, math, science, language arts, social skills, all of those things. But most importantly, we pray you'd reveal yourself to us this year through religion classes, but through all of our classes. Help us to get to know you better. Help us to grow in relationship with you, to grow in relationship with one another. Bless this year, we pray. We begin this year by praying together as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. St. Paul, during this school year, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Amen. All right, let's sing our next song, Every Move I Make. Make sure you have enough room so that we can be clapping, we can be moving as we sing and praise the Lord together. Let's clap. Ready for na 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 na. Here we go. Na 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 na. Thank you, Pastor and Miss Schaefer and the chapel team for that message. I'm Principal Jim Richards, and I just want to say, welcome back to school. We didn't know when this was going to happen, but here it is. So I'm so excited about this new school year. Welcome back to our returning families. Welcome back to our new families. And I just want to say a few words. Uh, as you know, we are looking at a whole new year a new opportunity. So I'm asking each of you and every single member of our staff to set your goals high. Put those expectations in and strive to do your very best. Show respect, show kindness, be helpful with each other. Don't participate in bullying. Do your very best to demonstrate manners, respect, and realize that all of us have been sent to serve. Now, I also want to point out we have some new people that have been sent to serve, too. So I ask you all to welcome Mrs. Coretto. She is stepping into a new and challenging and exciting role in our kindergarten. So welcome to Mrs. Coretta. Someone else that's been sent to serve is Dr. Carlson. She's going to be teaching and leading our art program, so make sure you say hi to her. You'll see her around campus because she's going to be moving from class to class. Also, we want to welcome Mrs. Reinecke, and she is serving as our reading specialist. So you'll see her along with Vicar Joe also throughout our campus. So welcome, 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 and we're looking forward to what this year brings to our entire staff. We have a tradition here at St. Paul. Each year, we ask our eighth graders to demonstrate what it means to be leaders in our school. And even though that we can't have you look at them right now, we do want you to know that our eighth grade students are ready, and they are ready to serve in a way that is exciting and meaningful. So, 
Eighth graders, I want you all to stand up, whether you're here on campus or you're whether, whether you're at home watching this online. So stand up, please. And I want to challenge you. Eighth graders, the challenge is this. It's pretty simple. Lead. Demonstrate. Demonstrate what it means to be sent to serve. Show kindness, respect, and help all of our students. You know this. The students are looking to you for leadership. Be helpful. Demonstrate. Lead with integrity, with honesty. We know you can do it. We've seen you do it already. And if you're a new student here, you'll catch on pretty quick. We have a very special eighth grade this year, and we are looking for them to make a big difference in our school. So eighth grade, the leadership challenge has been passed on to you. Everyone, let's have a great school year. Praise be to God. Thank you. What an awesome way to kick off our first day and being able to be right here at St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.